it's one of those things that when we get sick, people get concerned and they come. They do come for the one, two, three times, but then they stop coming because they move on with their lives. And you're the one sitting there alone dealing with this pressure. But I'm here today reminding you that God says in his word that he's still there. And we're going to use this to bring hope into your lives. I got this message and I, and I received it. Um, I received the, the totality of this message at the funeral for that pastor's wife with her children consoling them. And in this ministry, you don't get this in a seminary. You get this in a cemetery. The moment you are in a cemetery, that's the moment that it hits you. And you say, oh, wow. So no college could prepare you for this. No degrees could get you there. And it's usually your friends and family who, during this season, they say the things that don't really encourage you and that you feel hurt. You feel like they, they are the ones that should have your back. They are the ones that should be protecting you. But God is still there. He's still there. I want us to reflect and just hold on to those things. What did Job say to his wife? That's, my, that's a question I have in my mind right now. I want to figure out what did Job say to his wife? Because, you know, how we will react. We'll probably lash out to the wives and say <laughs> some some hurtful things and some things that, because we you know we know what we know the buttons to press when we are hurting. So let's see what Job says. So God is God is using this scripture to speak to you, so you can realign yourself with the scriptures, and how are you supposed to react? So let's go ahead and see. Let's go. Let's go back to that scenario. Let's go back to that realm of that story where Job is talking. And I imagine that he's still on his knees because if he has boils on his feet and all over his body, he really can't. There's no other place that he can bring comfort to. So his knees is the best place because he's closer to God than when he's on his knees. So I can imagine his wife probably over here around him. You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? He asks her a question. I'm known for a person to be rhetorical. I like to ask a question when I'm, when I'm perplexed a little bit. I ask a question just to get them stumbling a little bit. But Job had a, good, had a good point. Let's look at his question that he poses to his wife. Shall we indeed accept good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? We want all the good things. We want the house. We want the cars. We want fame. We want money. We want our children to have the latest things, the latest phones, the latest gadgets. But the moment that the moment that fence falls, I'm gonna stop coming to church. God did not. God did this to me, so I'm, I'm, going, I'm not going to the church. He allowed this to happen to me, so I get vengeful with God. And just like his wife, curse God and die. I'm here to hear today. If you're here today, this message is for you. So you can preach it. I know our, when I preach to the youth, I know that that pastor's wife, when I was, I was about their age when I was under her wings. And this pastor's wife taught me how to pray, taught me how to fast, how to war in the spirit. So I know that this is a time that our youth need to hear this. That 
good things happen as well as bad things, but we should always praise God in the midst of everything. So he told his wife, he instructed his wife, don't just take the good and leave the bad and say, God, um, if you do this for me, I will do, I will do that. But the moment you don't do it for me, I'm going to stop just, I'm going to stop being spiritual. I'm going to stop praying. I'm going to stop reading the word. I'm just going to be, uh, clearly you didn't work, so I'm going to go here and, and find something else in the world. Listen, God is here, and he wants this to be ingrained in your lives. Don't curse God, and don't die. So we have, we have those things. And he is giving us a, a glimpse of his life. Job is there as representing our lives. Because he was minding his business. And yet this things, these things happened. The fence broke. I know that the fence means a lot to a lot of people. And the fence, when it falls, we're subjected to a lot of things. Jesus, in the other garden, prepared us a message. He prepared our message. He gave us, he gave us what we need to know. Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Nevertheless. That's a big word. Nevertheless. Father, if I, if it's, if I must go through this, if I must, if I, if I must go through this cancer, if you're not going to re re remove it from me, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. God, if, if you're not going to restore my children or my belongings or my possessions, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. If I am never going to get through this depression, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. God is here speaking, and he wants us as a church to remember this ministry. Don't neglect this ministry of suffering. And we as leaders are going to teach you guys how to endure the good fight. It's not about age. I have learned a lot from our, our youth. So just be open to the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And I can see myself. I can see myself in this, in this story. How would I react? Do I run and give up quickly? The moment it gets tough, I want to just give up. The moment I don't get what I, what I want... I just give up on God. Job was a good example, but he wasn't enough. That's why Jesus came. And Jesus came to give us life and give us purpose. And with Jesus, we can go through all things. And I know that Jesus is going to be especially this season, going to be giving you encouragement to f go through things that you're facing and tie it to Jesus. Jesus will give you the encouragement that you need. Job still had to repent. He still had to, um, and, and we did, we're not going to go deeper into Job, but we're going to, if I were to give you a summary or a snippet, Job's friends come, and they have this dialogue with Job. 
nothing, nothing like good friends that come in and that say, oh, yeah, it's, it's your Christian walk that needs to be repaired. You know, some people, some people come and doubt your faith. You know, it's like, oh, you're not doing good enough. Oh, you didn't do better than that. Oh, this and that. But, but then, wait, wait, wait. How, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, think, I think sometimes it's important for us to not always depend on our friends to give us our destiny. The friends cannot see where you're going. They don't see the things that God has in store for you. So his dialogue with his friends, he goes back and forth, and the, the friends all end up saying it's his fault. If I, if I were to summarize that whole dialogue, they say it's your fault, Job, but you're the one uh, that if you would have done it better, maybe you curse, maybe you, maybe you sin, maybe your parents sin, and you're, this is your consequence. But then Job 42 give her some time up there too. Job 42. In the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Don't, don't get into a battle with your friends or with people that go and say something negative to your lives. Pray for them. Here's the key. And Job, and the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then all of his brothers, uh, then all of his brothers and all of his sisters and all of those who had been his acquaintances before came to him and ate food in his house, and they consoled him and comforted him. For all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. The moment you have finished going through your trials, God is going to bring people into your life to bless you. The things that you think, oh, I just, this medical expense is eating me away financially. God says, wait, don't give up. I will give you that, the, the thing that you need. Now the Lord bless the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. And he came and he called the name of the first uh, Gemini. In the name of the second, Kezai, and the name of the third, Karen Hapik. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. That's where you are. This is, this is where you're heading. The promise. That what you're dealing with right now is not going to stay. If it's here or there, you will have the victory. Because Jesus died for you and he gave you that victory. So God is in the presence and I'm so thankful that our youth can preach with me today. And I know that there are going to be preachers in this house leading sermons with you guys. And I know that they're going to be on fire for God. And they're going to be continuously working to, to get, get closer to God. So if I were to just I would invite the worship leaders back. It's this season that we must know the ministry of suffering. That when your fence is down, 